Oh, hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And more some boards! <laughs> it's time for another mower fix. I just picked this one off the street. Lately, I've been selling my last mower, and then that same day, I would pick up another mower, making that my last mower. <laughs> but obviously, I did Motherload 33 when my friend Bill Martini gave me all his stuff, at least most of his stuff. Uh, but I picked this off the street the other day too, uh, thanks to a tip from Quinn the Mailman. This is like his fourth or fifth tip. Very good. Anyway, it's a, uh, you know, pretty decent sized mower. I believe it's a 21 inch Craftsman has the big wheels in the back, has good front wheels. Look at the tread on it, it's very good. Has a 6.5 Brixton Stratton Quantum engine. Unfortunately, it is a primer bulb type. It is missing the cable. The cable's here, but it's broken, see? So we need a bail engagement cable, which Bill gave me. I also came back here when I first picked it up and dropped it off here, that my pull-on bag that I got from Bill also fits. So now I have a push mower with a bagger. You get this thing started and running well, this will sell for a good $125. So uh, let's see if I have a simple bale cable in those bins that Bill gave me right there. This one should be just wheels. It is. This one. Oh, cables. He gave me a lot of them. I don't know if they're any good or anything. One's with the spring and the hook. That's uh, for self-propulsion. Ooh, this one looks like a simple bale cable. Is it rusted though? No, moves freely. Is it long enough though? Go here. Oh, I don't think it's long enough. That's what she said. Yeah, it's off by about five inches. Five inches. We could all use another five inches. Look at here. Got one that's super long. Too long, actually. So this would work. Problem is, this one's seized. Can't pull it out. It's stuck in there. So I'm just going to wiggle this around a little bit, loosen up the rusting parts. Usually they're right in the middle because when they when water drips down the hole there, it settles into one place and rusts. Just, just keep going and right here is where you can hear some crackling, crackling and rustling sounds. So that's probably where the rust is. You just move it around and uh, maybe put some oil in it. I mean, I hope it's not messed up, but I, I can feel the rustling right around here, right at this bend. Here? Yeah, right there. Yeah, right around here. So I don't know. Try to pull this. Got no grip, so I'm just gonna stick the Z-Bend in this hole and pull. Ooh, look at that. Done. Fixed. Let's do this back and forth. Yeah. This will, this will work. This is the first time I'm doing this, by the way. Look at that. That's fixed. See? Now it's free! That's right, free. I'll oil it a little bit, but... We can install this right now. Right here, right now, right here, right now. Okay, this is missing the stud that comes out, goes through here. We'll just drive, uh, we'll just tape it or put a clamp on there. Cause it has to hold it there. Maybe that won't work. 
off the seat. So that didn't work. I put a self tapper there, but it just was not smooth enough that if you pulled hard, it breaks it. So this long cable is no good. I have an idea. What if I swapped this bail handle cable around so that the hole is on this side? Maybe that shorter one would reach now. I will get and try. Got the shorter cable, put it on this hole, flip the bail handle around. Yeah, baby. Yeah. So that's that. Let's see if this baby will start now. So what I'm thinking is this. The guy was mowing and then the cable broke. So he said, the hell with it. I'm going to chuck it. I'm not gonna. So that this was running and it was doing just fine. I just checked the oil. So there's a little bit of oil in there and there seems to be gas in it. I'm gonna prime it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna. And I can feel that the primer is actually working for a change and I hear bubbling inside the carburetor bowl. That's what I'm banking on. This is just a fine machine, and all it was was a broken cable. Exactly what I said it was because it makes sense if you're mowing right and the cable breaks and you don't have the capability of fixing it you just chuck it right I'm not gonna lie it sounds pretty damn good it that's it I'm just gonna clean this up take pictures and list it for 125 just like that Break cable, that's all it was. So this bag has a couple of rips. Just to make it a little bit better. I've had some luck with this. I just used this really thin wire. And I'll just coil it around there just to close the rips. That'll be a little bit better. There we go. Not bad. Now we're just gonna clean it up using some super clean foaming action spray, then just rinse it off. Holy cow, look at that. Do you see how that um, re reel was spinning so long after I just, you know, used the hose to turn it? It's a really good reel. I didn't wipe it or anything, guys. I just sprayed on super clean and just sprayed it off. It looks fantastic. I better take some pictures before it uh, dries up. <laughs> Go check out super clean, guys. So I just checked the oil. It doesn't look like there's too much oil in there. So I'm gonna put some 30 weight Earl in there. That'll be enough. When you have like three or four long as, that, that's enough. It's about 10 ounces. All right, so it's a little over. I'm not worried about it. The thing about washing your mower is that after you wash it, sometimes it doesn't start. Because <laughs> of the water down into the tank or the carburetor or whatever. Let's see. Uh-huh. Good. 
engine. And that primer bulb actually works for a change. I'm not even going to touch it, man. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. 125 is what I'm going to sell it for. So there's my quick fix of the day. It only needed a bail handle cable. Fortunately, thanks to Bill, I had one. Found this on the street thanks to Quinn's tip. Bail handle cable, cleaned it up with some super clean, added some Earl. Didn't cost me a dime. Picking it up, selling it for $125, that's my goal. I usually get it. While reviewing this BNT solar street light, Quinn the mailman came with a package. And it's from David and Abel Sanford from uh, Tanaha, Texas. David saw one of my episodes where I was wearing one of those classic in and out burger shirts. He says, oh man, you can't wear that shirt. I'm gonna send you a Whataburger shirt from Texas. And he also sent me a hat from Texas. As you guys know, I was born in Oklahoma. So my favorite team are the Dallas Cowboys and the Oklahoma Sooners. Look at that, huh? down horns but I love these visor caps keeps you uh, cool in the summer and also keeps the sun out of your eyes I think I'm gonna put this medium Whataburger shirt on Ooh, long sleeve <laughs> maybe I won't wear it today but I'll wear it in a future video thanks a lot to David and Abel Sanford from Texas appreciate the gifts you know the subscribers don't send gifts anymore. So thanks a lot, David and Abel. Thanks again to David and Abel Sanford from Texas for the shirt and this hat. If any of you guys want to send me stuff, email me at mowersblowers at AOL.com. All right, one down. You know what? I still have time in the day. What do you say we do another one, huh? How about this mulcher? You don't have to worry about a bag. a design mulcher you can't put a bag on if you wanted to because there's no door the only thing it's good for is mulching and a side discharge if you bought the deflector it's an MTD has a high wheel in the back and it has that five uh, wow that's a 300e that's cheap it has a primer bulb one of those newer engines but these mow pretty well believe it or not these sold for like $168 a while back without a bag. Well, it doesn't come with a bag. And uh, now they're like uh, $299. Anyway, let's uh, troubleshoot this one. Since I have the hose out, I'm gonna super clean it real quick. Just check the oil, good oil, clean, up to the level. There's some gas in here, at least it smells like gas. I'm priming it right now. And it feels okay, I guess, but I just don't hear any bubbling. I mean, it's complete, it looks good. Bail handle cable works, we don't have to worry about that today. Well, that feels weird. Blow some ether in here. Hmm. You know what? I feel like it's kind of like crackling, you know? And when that happens, it's off timing. So it could be the uh, assured key. Took the spark plug out and I uh, clamped it to the muffler. See if we get any spark. I can't see it, you guys can. I'm gonna go back to the videotape and see.
So I saw spark. I'm sure you guys saw it too. It's a good spark. Uh, I'm gonna put the spark plug back, but I'm gonna spray a little bit of ether inside the, uh, the spark plug hole. Okay, put the spark plug back in. starts now and it runs fine however the sound is strange like it's a little bit louder and you see with the air filter off you saw what, what did you guys see vapors coming out of the uh, vent hole looks like it might have a blown head gasket that's blow by <laughs> would I change the head gasket on this cheap piece of junk Just for shits and giggles, I took the uh, top co engine cover off, three five sixteenths, and then. Uh well, so my uh, phone died as soon as I was showing you my removing the cylinder head to show you the head gasket. Phone dies, so I had to go inside. Here's a screenshot of the last second, right before the phone died, of the head gasket. The cylinder looked great, clean and everything, and the gasket was fine. So I just put it back on again. Then I decided that I was going to take the top cover off again and check out the key. If you look carefully, it's there, right? But if you look even more carefully, right? It's off by just a little bit. And sometimes that little bit can make a difference. I, I know you guys think it looks perfect, but there's a little smidgen that's just uh, like that, like, like this. So I'm gonna take the flywheel off and replace the key because I think the timing is just wrong. Tried starting it a bunch of times, still won't start. I think the time that it was started, it just was a fluke. Like it just moved just that little bit to make it start. I don't know, I'm thinking that's what it is. Nut back onto the crankshaft again. Got a sledgehammer. This always works for me. Well, not always, but 99.9. Take a crowbar, pry right underneath the uh, flywheel. The key is to have pulling the flywheel off pressure, you know? So you're pushing down on this crowbar, lifting the flywheel and just bang it. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's just pull off a little bit because it's more leverage ready. That didn't work either. Well, look, I have no choice but to put it here because it's the only place that it'll allow me to put it. Because it has its coping around it. There we go. Oh, I might have broken the threads. ought to be okay. Alright, there's the flywheel. And I'm just going to take a look at the key and see if it's slightly 
stripped. I don't know, man. It looks okay. It's a slight bit, but I don't think that makes much of a difference. I'm going to put it back in. So I put the flywheel back on and I put the key back in. And as you can see, it's a lot more centered now. Maybe this will make the difference. Let's just hope that nut goes on because I did kind of uh, ruin the threads on the top. really is kind of easy to work on these things not hard at all these covers are like Kohler covers three three screws some Hondas easy maybe uh, maybe that fixed it uh, we just kind of just jarred that keyway just a little bit maybe it'll start now Maybe it'll be smoother. Nope. Oh, this is turning into a head scratcher video. You know, I never checked the carburetor because remember it ran steadily and continuously. If the carburetor was dirty and not getting fuel, it wouldn't have done that. Which is why I haven't done the char carburetor. I might have to look in there. Maybe there's water in there. Who knows? But I just sprayed it with jism. It's getting spark. Man, not even a little bit of a sign that it's going to start. What could it be? So we just got to troubleshoot everything. And so I guess I'm going to take a look at the valves because when I removed the head, I saw the, I saw the push rods. So if I see them, meaning that they didn't seat, you know, they were unseated from me looking at it. So maybe if I put it on, it didn't, uh, Go on right. Another bolt! Duh! Ha! So there you go. The rocker arms are not even touching the push rod. <laughs> it's off completely. Now I don't know if that's why it doesn't work. It could be the reason why it doesn't work now. But before I took the head off. Spark plug out, stick the screwdriver in there. It's the only way I know how to do top dead center to check the valves. And it was way off. But it wouldn't even tighten very much. You know, I didn't want to break the bolt, you know. And it just seemed like it wouldn't tighten anymore, you know. Tried and tried without breaking the bolt. Tightened it as best I could. It's still off. It's like eight thousandths. It's supposed to be like four to six, you know what I mean? But it's like eight or ten, you know. But it's tighter and at least the rocker arms are on it. <laughs> see. There you go. 
That's what it was. Flyers are prime every time. Kind of a pain. Fries are prime every time unless it's super hot. So that's what it was. It was a combination of maybe the flywheel key, who we'll never know. Um, Carburetor is obviously clean because it runs without any hesitancy once it starts. You do have to prime it every time you want to start it, unless it's super hot, which it isn't. Um, so it was the push rod coming off the rocker arm. Maybe. <laughs> but now we're consistently getting it to start whenever we prime. So that's it. That was it. A little bit of troubleshooting. It's pretty easy to work on, you know. It's just three five sixteenths, and this cover comes right off. You can see everything. Taking off the flywheel wasn't very hard either you know it's it's all right there so it's pretty easy to work on plastic carburetors I like them because they never rust and uh, I never really had any problems with it so I like the plastic carburetors so also this was like a uh, hundred bucks 80 hundred bucks it's a mulcher it's no bag involved but wheels are in good shape though you know Automatic transmission fluid. Let's go. The very least lets you take great pictures. It looks brand new in the pictures. Fixing two mowers in a day. When was the last time that happened, huh? See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.